Hello Richard Saunders, welcome to YouTube. Can you tell me what a sceptic is and what is scepticism? Well in my case a sceptic is someone who investigates claims of the paranormal and the supernatural with an open mind I must stress but with a very scientific outlook and a critical mind. In other words we simply don't accept things because people just say it's true or they think it's true. People think all sorts of things are true so we, we try to test things whenever possible but we the tests are very strict. So from a point of view that's what my scepticism is all about. So what's the difference between a cynic and a sceptic? A cynic would say there are no such things as ghosts, go away you silly person, where a sceptic would say the, the evidence so far indicates heavily that there's no such things as ghosts, but if the evidence came tomorrow then I would change my mind. It sort of runs along those lines. But aren't beliefs harmless? Uh, yes and no. Some beliefs, yeah sure, why not? People believe all sorts of crazy things and it's generally harmless, but you can believe that a magic potion will protect your child from diseases, for example, and not get them properly vaccinated then your belief becomes harmful. What about psychics and mediums? People say it's just a bit of fun, a bit of a laugh. Is that really the case? Both. It is a bit of fun and a bit of a laugh. I'm not, I can't come down too heavily on, on this aspect of it. But again, people can lose a lot of money by going again and again and again to psychics and mediums. And I think at the end of the day, it's like a consumer affairs thing. Um, if you're paying for a psychic reading and you're not getting one, you're getting something which is like or pretending to be a psychic reading, then that's you're being ripped off. And briefly, how did you get into scepticism? Curiosity. Uh, when I was younger, I really wanted to know about UFOs and monsters and Bigfoots and, and spoon bending. Um, it was a phase I went through and I never came out of. And I, I did lots of research and study and I discovered that um, when these things were tested, they failed. And I thought, how can that be? Because I believed in them. Um, a lot of people take the attitude that if they're tested and failed, it doesn't mean that they don't work, it means the tests were wrong. Well, I've now conducted many tests myself and I can assure you the tests aren't wrong, it's just the claims keep failing. You were a founding member of Australian Skeptics, if I'm right. Oh, a founding member of Skeptics in the pub. Skeptics in the pub, yeah. which is a brilliant organisation and that's linked to Australian Skeptics, it is, isn't it? Yes, the, the, the Australian Skeptics have been around since 1981, so a long time before I was involved. But I kicked off this Skeptics in the pub about five years ago and it's very successful. And what can one expect at a meeting? Lots of this, <laughs> lots of uh, laughs and lots of uh, spoon bending. And very briefly, I know you can't say much on it, but you were the bad, the evil judge on The <laughs> One, weren't you? What was it like doing The One? I thought I was the open-minded one, in fact. Um, it was great. It was a lot of hard work, uh, a bit stressful at times, long days in the studio. Uh, but, it, but at the end of the day, it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. So, And I hope there'll be another series. And you do podcasts, don't you? Yes, the Skeptic Zone. There we go. So it's www.skepticzone.tv. We're the number, as of today, we're the number one podcast for science and uh, for religion and spirituality in the country, and we're number 25 of all podcasts in the country. And of course, you've got your Father Christmas hat because it's Christmas. Not that you believe in Father Christmas, do you? Well, no, I'll make an exception for <laughs> Father Christmas. <laughs> and one last question. Where can we find out more about skepticism? Any good websites? I would recommend skepticzone.tv or skeptics.com.au. And actually, there is one final question. What would it take for you to believe? Good, repeatable, solid evidence. Simple as that. Um, a once-off occurrence is interesting, but I always have to keep in the back of my mind that I can be fooled like anybody else. So if something is real, it will survive repeated testings and, and uh, examination. Richard Saunders, thanks so much. Thank you.